Hello everybody! Um, it's been on my heart for a while now to make a series of videos that talks about the process of doing sculpture with mold making. And the reason is, is because for a lot of years, um, sculpture was my passion, but I couldn't really do much with it because to do ceramic sculpture, you need a kiln and you need glazes and it was a setup I just couldn't afford um, and I didn't have the space for and really I still don't. Um, mold making solves those problems because you can really make anything you want and then mold it and then you can use a variety of different mediums to cast that mold, such as concrete, which is what I use primarily but there are other things as well. I mean, there's plaster repairs, resin, you know, rubber silicones. It, there's all kinds of things on the market now. So that is the main reason why I went to mold making is because it was something I could do basically in my house, my garage, you know, um, whereas needing a kiln and the 220 electricity and the glazes was not something that I could really set up for. And I wanted to share it with other people out there who are interested in doing sculpture but just don't have the resources to do so. So this is going to be a series of videos. Um, this first one is going to be tips and tricks um, for clay sculpture. I'm going to go over some tools, my favorite tools and what I do with them, as well as other processes I have to stay organized and to do the best work that I can. It's important to remember in the videos I am going to be primarily talking about what I do which is concrete. Um, now when you're working with concrete it's a little bit different than if you're doing resin. Um, your pieces really need to be kind of solid like this little elephant. You can see how his ears are tucked in and they're nice and thick whereas you know if it was more realistic he had really thin ears and legs sticking out and his trunk is you know closer to his face. You need to have um, your pieces to be solid. Um, or your concrete's going to be weak. It's not meant to have small, thin pieces. You lose its durability like that. So it needs to be kind of a thicker piece of concrete or um, your object will not be durable. That's also important to remember when you're mold making what your um, casting material is going to be because concrete acts differently than resin versus plaster paris and so on. So I'll primarily be talking about concrete because that is what I do, um, but I will be touching on some other subjects as well. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are tools, the tools that I primarily use and what I use them for. I also have some other tips and tricks and just sculpture in general, things I've picked up over the years. I've been doing this for around five years now, actually I think it's more like six, um, and so I've learned a lot from other people, books, internet, everything. Okay, so let's get started with going over the tools I use. This is my tool caddy, and what it is is a silverware organizer that I got from Walmart. Uh, you can really get these anywhere. They're really inexpensive, and I would definitely recommend it. It's just a good way to organize your tools. Now I have a lot of tools, but I really don't use that many of them. I basically have six or seven tools that I use all the time, and I keep the others just in case I'm doing odd and end projects and that sort of thing. I'm going to go over the tools I do use and what I use them for primarily. Now you can get your tools anywhere. Michaels and Hobby Lobby all have sets of tools. They're fairly inexpensive um, and they usually come in specific packages like there's going to be a package of tools for throwing pottery which I have in here and I do use and just like regular wood tools and then a package of the metal tools. They're really easy to come by and I recommend just getting a few packages to get you started. The first tools I'm going to go over are the wood tools that I use consistently. There are two here that are the same tool and then a little tool with a kind of half moon hook end that I use all the time. It's probably one of my most used tools, this tool here. Um, I'm not even sure why I have a preference for it. It's just very versatile. Um, it just has this kind of smooth hook and it doesn't gouge. And then it has a sort of knife on the other end of it. This tool comes with the just basic wood tool set. These two tools are the same tool. They have kind of a scoop on this one side and then on the other side um, there's going to be a angled point. Now the one on top, I actually grind it down because I like the angle better. I use it for like smoothing the edges of my pieces and stuff. 
um, more than the pointed part of the other set that I have. Don't be afraid to modify your tools. They're your tools. Make them work for you and what you need them for. Next are the two spatula tools I use. The first one is a wood one. It is for throwing pottery, but I use it to smooth edges and really just scrape whatever I need. It's nice and sturdy. The next one is a metal tool, which is more flexible um, and therefore making rounder shapes is easier. Next is the small metal carving tools. Now these come in a set pretty much anywhere you want to buy them. They're very handy for carving out shapes such as if you want a nice circular shape or just shaving clay in general. Next are my spatula tools which are really my newest and most used favorite tools. They are basically a knife edged metal tool on one side with a small spatula head on the other. I use these all of the time for carving out and to make indentations for like eyes and that sort of things in my pieces. I really like these tools and I use them a lot. They're also known as wax carving tools. Now we are on to my texturing tools. I basically use this tool for all of my textures. I've had it for a while, I don't even remember where I got it, but what it is is kind of a ball stylus tool and it has um, a little bit of a larger bald end on the one side and then smaller on the other side and it's great for making eyes. I'll make a, the round voids in the eyes and then this side is just tiny, tiny, you can see it is a tiny little ball on that end and I use it for carving in all of my texture. This is the needlepoint tool which you can also use for texture but it gouges versus this tool which just carves and it just works better and I use it a lot. I'm actually wearing it out. I use it so much. So these tools are great for texture. You're going to want a good texture tool and whatever just works best for you. Now onto sponges which are really important. These are great for smoothing out your clay. I've got two different kinds here. The one on the left is a natural sponge. It's much thinner and it's also much more dense. And the one on the right is obviously a uh, fake or a um, synthetic sponge and it just is more absorbent and it's a lot softer. I use both of these to smooth out my clay before texturing and um, these are a must-have when you're working with clay. Next is this little cup and my paintbrushes. This is just like a little egg cup. You can get them at the dollar store. They're really cheap. Um, I use it to keep water in for my paintbrushes. So I'll just use my spray bottle and put water in the cup and then I use my paintbrushes to smooth down my clay, which is I use a water-based clay. So if I over texture or if it's time just to smooth down the design, this is what I use. The big brush I normally use just to brush away carvings and stuff from my pieces. And last but not least is the wire cutting tool. Now this one usually comes in this set that comes with the pottery throwing tools um, and it's great for cutting your clay which can be tricky. So this is one method where you kind of just cross it and then you're going to tighten until you cut through the clay. And then you can also kind of floss system where you're just going to wrap it and push straight down and that will cut the clay as well. And I also use this to scrape my pieces off of my tile platforms. And so here I'm going to show you with a piece of clay how it works in the different ways. First you'll just take the two wooden handles and you're just going to crisscross the wire and gently pull which will cause the clay to cut through. And you want to keep the wire tight together so that it doesn't cut separate pieces so it's just one solid piece. Just like that. And now you have two separate pieces of clay. Now be careful how tight you pull because you will kink your wire when you're doing that method. Um, the next one would just be like wrapping the wire around your fingers and pushing down on the clay. Now this gets harder depending on how hard your clay is. If your clay is really soft then it works really well. If it's really hard then it's harder to do. But all in all this is a must-have tool and um, I would definitely recommend picking it up with your basic set of tools. That's it for clay tools. Now on to tips for clay sculpture. Tip number one is what your work surface is going to be. You need something fairly sturdy and what I have learned works best is tiles. They're very cheap. You can get them anywhere. This one was like 50 cents a tile and they come in all kinds of different sizes. Now the only thing with tiles is you kind of want something that's pretty flat. You don't want something that's really 
textured or rough when you're working on but these work really great and like I said they're pretty cheap so if they do break it's no big deal. Another work surface that works are cutting boards and you can get them from Salvation Army or Yard Cells fairly cheap. They don't warp. Um, I would get plastic ones. Um, if you do work with wood it needs to be treated or it could warp and which would affect your piece. Okay so the next tip is tip number two and that is your lighting. So lighting is really important when you're working. You have to be able to see what you're doing and it's really frustrating when you don't have good lighting. I recommend just picking up some portable lights. This one happens to have a clamp on the end so it just clamps wherever you want to put it. It's just important for when you need to do detail or small fine work in your sculptures. The next tip is on miscellaneous tools and utensils, tip number three. So you're going to want to get your tools and utensils from Salvation Army, Goodwill, Yard Cells. You don't want to get this stuff new. There's so much this kind of thing out there that you can repurpose and it works really, really well for your needs. So when you're in need of tools or spoons or that sort of thing, those are the places that you want to check first because it's inexpensive and they have a great variety. Last but not least is tip number four, organization. You already saw my tool caddy. It's important to keep your tools and your supplies organized. It just makes your working environment easier. For instance, I have these little containers here. I get them from the dollar store, family dollar, whatever. They're fairly inexpensive and I keep my paint in them just for easy access. Also, you want maybe something like the plastic drawers for organizing paint brushes and rags and that sort of thing. Organization is really important and it just makes your work environment better and easier. When I have leftover containers and stuff that I want to get rid of, I will keep them around. I always have a use for them. You know, sometimes they get destroyed with paint and so it's always good to try to repurpose things when you can. And one more important thing is a journal or a sketchbook. This is really important. If you're serious about your art or your craft, you're going to have ideas that come to you. You know, you're going to wake up or you're going to see something that inspires you. I highly recommend keeping a sketchbook or a journal type sketchbook where you're just going to put in ideas that come to you throughout the day or after work or whatever it is and then you can keep those and look back on them at the time of your inspiration and it just helps you keep your thoughts organized. You can also keep notes and that sort of thing. They're really cheap. They come in all kinds of cool sizes and colors and Ross has them for like three dollars. You just can't beat the price and they're really valuable for your craft. All right, so that's pretty much it for the organization and for our tips and tricks today. That is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the tips and tricks and tools of clay sculpture. I will be doing more videos on the whole process of sculpture to mold making to pouring different kinds of clays, different kinds of medians, anything that I can think of that I can be that could be helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe.